I am Barbara Ball, and I'm speaking to you as a concerned citizen in Miami. Miami is a U.S. city that is most threatened by sea level rise. Leaving the coast, leaving the shore, moving inland, in other words, retreat. Miami needs to retreat from the shorelines. It's projected by the year 2100 that the sea level rise in Miami will be six feet higher than it is now. But the issue is that Miami is already only six feet above the sea now. So that's not much room for sea level rise. Another thing that you probably already know is that there's $416 billion worth of real estate at risk. $416 billion of real estate at risk. I have thought of three major financial measures that will act as a catalyst towards retreat. The first catalyst towards retreat has to do with the developers. Already some of the developers are thinking, are seeing that, their, that sea level is rising, and so they're buying land inland. The problem with that, I mean, it's a good, it obviously has to happen. The problem with that is displacing a lot of poor people, and that could cause social unrest down the line. The second major financial catalyst for retreat has to do with mortgages and insurance. If you can't get, we all know when you get a mortgage, you, get, you have to have insurance. If you can't get insurance, you can't get a mortgage. Now, during Hur Hurricane Andrew, eight insurance companies went out of business overnight. Eight insurance companies. That's a lot. So there's already, it's sort of like the insurance companies are the canaries in the coal mine. The third major financial measure is the building codes will need to be, well, there's no building codes yet in Miami. We need to have building codes. Given these three points, I encourage you to take retreat into consideration as we make plans that affect all of us who live in Miami. Thank you. Hello, my name is Felicia Chavez. I'm the director of a small local nonprofit called Systems Thinking Marin. So what if I told you that beginning in 2013, the human race for the first time in our brief but colorful history pulled together millions of voices from 193 countries to ask, what should our priorities be as a species? Well, on August 12th of 2015, the General Assembly of the United Nations released a document titled Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, asking us to achieve 17 global goals by 2030, including number one, no poverty, number two, zero hunger, number three, good health and well-being for all, number four, quality education for all, et cetera. So as one of 58 counties within the fifth largest economy in the world, California, we stand at a strategic point. Will we here in Marin County choose to embrace these goals? Will we in Marin County meet number 13, climate action, quote, take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts by 2030? Can you see from a systems thinking perspective that all of these issues, number five, gender equality, number 10, reduced inequalities, number 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions are deeply, intimately related to your climate work? Can you see from a systems thinking, we could say ecosystem thinking perspective, that when we work together towards systemic solutions, localizing food systems, living wage, empowering women and girls, that we dramatically multiply our impact. If so, I'd like to speak with you after this meeting to set up a time to go over systems thinking solutions to these issues. Thank you. We are all here today because we realize there is a moral imperative to do something about climate change and re rapidly reduce our carbon emissions. Every single ton of carbon that we leave in the atmosphere does an estimated $417 worth of environmental damage. 
with the trillions of dollars of carbon currently in the atmosphere, if we sequestered that carbon into sustainable development, we could not only reverse climate change, we could end hunger in our lifetime. My name is Daisy Carlson, and I have been writing about climate adaptation for the last 10 years. And of the 400 or so solutions that I've written about, I think one of the most effective tools that we have to restore global health are tax-deductible carbon offsets. They not only sequester carbon, they increase habitat, biodiversity, groundwater storage, fresh air, but they can also reduce poverty and increase female literacy rate, rates, which is the number three most important thing, according um, to Paul Hawken, to re reverse climate change. So one of these tax-deductible carbon offset projects are solar stoves. Um, they not only sequester carbon that's released in, in the atmosphere, they protect the lungs, and, uh, you know, protect the lungs of the people <laughs> that are, <sighs> there it goes again. <laughs> they protect the lungs of the children who are um, exposed to these carbon fuels. Um, and they keep girls in school rather than out on roads looking for, out on dangerous roads looking for wood. Um, of course, it's very important to try to reduce your carbon emissions at home. Um, but if you can't reduce the number of flights that you take and you have more than five tons of carbon emissions annually, choosing carbon offsets can reverse your environmental debt today. You can go to cooleffect.org in Kentfield and they have a whole menu of wonderful projects that you can choose from. Thank you so much. Thank you again for visiting the Marine Mammal Center today. By just showing up and taking this tour, you have already helped support our work. And I hope you learned something new today about our patients and the three biggest threats that they face. Because what affects them affects all of us. Ocean trash, overfishing, and climate change are those three big threats. We all depend on our oceans for more than 50% of our oxygen to balance global weather patterns, absorb massive amounts of CO2, and as a major food source. We've always thought that our oceans were too big to fail, and now we know that's not true, and we see every day the heavy toll that our actions have taken on ocean health. I'm sure you share our concerns, and there is still hope. We can all help by taking simple actions to address these three big threats. Here are a few suggestions. To reduce ocean trash, avoid using single-use cups such plastic or paper cups, plastic straws, styrofoam containers. Look for packaging, packaging that's minimal when you're shopping and recycle and reuse whenever possible. If you love seafood, and I still do, support sustainable fisheries by using the Seafood Watch guide when you're at a restaurant making the, to make the best choices when ordering seafood there or at a grocery store. We have pocket-sized guides ready to, for you to pick up on your way out, or you can use the app downloaded to your smartphone. To mitigate climate change, go ahead and reduce your carbon footprint by getting out into nature more, hiking, uh, you know, walking, biking, and, um, or consider a high mileage or electric vehicle. Opt into a community choice aggregator, such as Marin Clean Energy or Sonoma Clean Power to have 50 to 100% of your energy, electricity coming from clean, renewable sources. Whatever you choose to do, we thank you for supporting the center, our patients, and our precious oceans. Good morning. My name is Kirsten Nolan. I'd like to take this moment to thank the board for offering this opportunity to discuss how we can create safer and healthier community here in Green Oaks, specifically through a program called Resilient Neighborhoods. Here at Green Oaks, we have beautiful rolling hills, 
of majestic oak trees literally in our backyards. But with this gift comes an inherent risk of wildfires. Uh, and climate change has exacerbated these risks. We've unfortunately seen these events impact our local uh, neighborhoods or communities like Paradise and Napa. One important lesson we can glean from these disasters is that relationships fortify communities and can save lives. If a disaster struck tomorrow, how many neighbors could you call? And how many neighbors could call on you? Through resilient neighborhoods, we can meet to form relationships while simultaneously developing disaster preparedness plans. However, building relationships alone is not enough. We must also reduce our individual greenhouse gas emissions, which are contributors to climate change, which threaten our communities. Resilient Neighborhoods offers a framework of free and low cost actions to guide us on how to do this together. Resilient Neighborhoods has already helped reduce over 5 million pounds of annual CO2 emissions in Marin County. This program works. What I'm asking from you today is to commit to meeting with your neighbors just a handful of times to create an emergency preparedness plan and actionable steps to reduce individual greenhouse gas emissions to create a safer Green Oaks community today and a healthy Marin for the future. Thank you. My name is Lisa Williams, and I'm a Ross resident and a Marin native. I'm also a proud ambassador for One Tam and a student in this year's Environmental Forum of Marin class. I want to take the time to thank the staff and board for your willingness to consider electric mountain biking in the watershed. I know that your primary focus is on maintaining our water supply and maintaining and restoring the habitat, and for this we are very grateful. But today, I want to focus on stewardship. And I want to focus on stewardship of Mount Tam and making sure that people connect to this environment. One of those ways is riding e-bikes. Riding e-bikes is about getting out of your cars and onto the mountain. We need multiple entry points for experiencing Mount Tam. E-bikes do not function like motor vehicles. You have to pedal the bike to get it going and to keep it going. We need as many people on bikes as possible in any form, be that town bikes, road bikes, mountain bikes, and yes, e-bikes. This is about access to all, regardless of age, disability, or fitness level. People should be out on Mount Tam. Riding a bike on Mount Tam should not just be for the young and super fit. We are leaders and innovators in Marin, which is why mountain biking was invented here in the first place. We can incorporate this next iteration of mountain bikes into our land use. Before I close, I want to thank you again for this opportunity to speak. In this time of rapid climate change, it's imperative to get people connected to nature whenever and wherever we can. So I would urge you to amend section 9.04.01 of your land use regulations to enable and not restrict the use of e-mountain bikes on Mount Tam. Thank you. My name is Wilfred Welch. We have been residents of Marin County for over 20 years. For the last three years, I have devoted most of my attention to exploring the science behind global warming and climate change and the actions that communities and individuals need to take to be the part of the solution and not the problem. I liken global warming to a freight train that is coming down the tracks right at us. We are trying not to pay attention while we play on the tracks and we are not listening to the vibration of the tracks as it comes towards us. Marine, Marine Clean Energy Program, MCE, uh, is doing a terrific job of getting all of us, or most of us, to start shifting away from fossil fuels and using renewable energy. 77% of all Marin 
businesses and households are signed up for Marin Clean Energy, but only 4.42% of those 77% are actually uh, signed up for deep green, meaning using 100% renewables for their energy supply. When we shifted over to Marin Clean Energy, deep green program, it only cost us $10 more per month suggesting that, that that is not, that funding is not the issue for this affluent community. That a lack of political will is the problem. We have the technologies in this country. We have it in this community. We do not have the political will in this country. And even though we have more of it in this county than most, we do not have it sufficiently. My proposal, is that we, uh, you, the Board of Supervisors, uh, uh, take on a, an ambitious program to move uh, marine clean energy, uh, deep energy, from that 4.42% to 50% by the end of 2019 and 100% by the end of 2020. Uh, it is, does not require the funds, it requires political will, you have it, I hope, and we are going to be the better for it, and the nation will as well. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Amanda Meacham, and I'm here on behalf of the Hamilton Wetland Nursery. Thank you for considering us for a fiscal sponsorship. This is how it happened. Someone handed me a clipboard and asked if I wanted to volunteer. This is how I became a Hamilton Wetland Nursery volunteer over six years ago and became part of something much bigger than myself. As a volunteer, I have watched many people walk through the doors of the nursery to help. Grade school, high school, college students, and environmental interns. AmeriCorps teams and youth from underserved communities and troubled homes. Local Boy Scouts, a team of birders, and of course, retired people like myself. Together, we have collected seeds, propagated plants, removed invasive species, hauled away shoreline trash, and collected data for further research. Before volunteering, I watched the gradual evolution of Hamilton Airfield from a toxic environment to one capable of supporting wetland life. Since I joined the nursery, I have watched the co-evolution of a group of volunteers into a dedicated community of, com of wetland stewards. We are committed to connecting people to the environment of the wetlands, thereby increasing their sense of ownership and involvement. We want to propagate plants for other wetland projects in the future and continue to support internships that will train future wetland scientists. But now we are at a crossroads. With the Hamilton project nearing completion and future restoration work moving to adjacent parcels, the federal funding for the nursery may be withdrawn. Will you help me continue the mission? Can I hand you the clipboard now? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Do you live in the uh, Larkspur Isle condos? Are you concerned about the Corte Madera Creek we live adjacent to and alongside of? My name is Paula Alsterlin, and for the past 23 years, I have been a resident at Larkspur Isle and lived along the creek. I've enjoyed the beauty, the uniqueness, and the landscape, the ever-changing landscape of the creek. My purpose uh, is to, of talking to you is to encourage you to uh, initiate a discussion about Larkspur Isle. I propose that um, we think about the topic I'm going to talk about, and I will send you an email after January 1st regarding the interest and possible uh, short meeting to see, if, uh, to see if anyone is interested in discussing and improving the situation along the creek. 
The Corn of McDera Creek um, and its immediate shoreline has been dramatically changing in the last 20 plus years. I will be eager to hear what you have seen. Climate changes have had a dramatic negative influence on the creek, which we live on. I'm deeply concerned and have been gathering information about the creek and uh, what local agencies have been doing. In our condo development in the winter, there has repeatedly been, there have been repeatedly challenges about our, our living spaces and our cars. In fact, that was a topic in the December newsletter from our property management company. You may be aware that the water level has been rising for a long time. When I moved to Larkspur Isle in the 90s, there was a small wooden dock outside my condo, and that condo is completely gone. Uh, excuse me, that, that dock is completely gone. And now the water comes up within 10 to 20 feet of my walkway. My proposal as a, a neighborhood community is that we consider these changes seriously and consider what we can do now and in the near future. And I will be in touch soon. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Marion Matthews, and I am on the Environmental Forum of Marin. So today, I am here to talk to you about conversations versus carbon and catastrophe. I just returned from paradise and the horrible fire that was up there. And I saw firsthand the loss of life, the amount of destruction, and also the amount of carbon that was put into the soil substrate and into the atmosphere. We know now from the US Geological Survey and what Ryan Zinke said, regardless of your politics, that 15% of all California emissions caused from the 2018, are caused from the 2018 wildfires. That's a very disturbing fact. We also know that since 1923, of the 20 most destructive fires in California, the common ignition, the most common ignition of those fires was power line. So, we need to have a conversation with Marin's power line distribution companies, regardless of whether it's PG&E, MCE, and we need to talk about how they are conducting vegetation clearance around those power lines, as well as the required maintenance by law. We need their insurances. We need proper maintenance. So, Sure, I have it on right. Probably close enough. We can do this. We can prevent power line ignitions. We can save lives. And we can give our citizens more time to evacuate. Thank you for listening. And please, I do not want to look for your ashes. So let's do this. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Annika Osborne. I live in San Rafael and I work with Cool the Earth. I believe that our dreams must be bigger than our fears. My dream is to make Marin a low carbon county. I am hopeful because Marin County wisely created Drawdown Marin, a collaborative effort to provide clear leadership to residents so that we may take environmental action and walk our progressive talk. Today, I want to talk with you about the importance of accelerating the movement to drive electric and help make Marin a low carbon leader. According to Drawdown Marin, almost two thirds of Marin's greenhouse gas emissions come from transportation. While walking, biking, and carpooling are great ways to reduce our carbon footprint, most residents require our own vehicles. So, um, sorry. Because our local electricity comes mostly from renewable sources, we can cut our carbon footprint in half by driving electric. With our current federal administration lacking environmental leadership, 
our county has shown its desire to lead. As such a well-educated and progressive community, Marin County can lead a drawdown movement, serving as a model for other counties. Let's enhance our leadership momentum by promoting, incentivizing, and driving electric vehicles. It can be difficult to acknowledge that every time we pump gas into our cars, we are supporting big oil. Every dollar we spend on gas puts money in the pockets of the oil industry and its lobbyists, which in turn prevents us from making the world low carbon. Instead, let's invest in green technologies like electric vehicles. While the recent fire caused disaster in paradise and poor air quality here in Marin County, we were again reminded of the impact of climate change. These critical times call for urgent action. I ask you to accelerate your leadership by promoting, incentivizing, and driving electric. Thank you for your leadership. Hi, I'm Jerry Kunin. I'm here to share something extraordinary that is changing my life. And um, my hope is that it may be something that can change yours. I have recently, um, through the, the, the um, generosity of someone I met while creating a food um, program for seniors in Marin, offered to cover a scholarship for me to join the Environmental Forum of Marin. And I'm finding that um, it's changing the way I wake up in the morning. I use, usually wake up as two people, one a very anxious person wondering how I'm going to deal with uh, the ocean around me having, in a matter of a few years, th th more plastic that weighs more than the fish in it. I'm having a very hard time uh, when I go to a website like um, uh, the World Wildlife Fund and I, and I read a quote that says, no matter what I do going forward, that's something that I and the community around me believe in that we're going to lose it. It makes me anxious, it makes me nervous, and I am finding that with the Environmental Forum that really was started by a, a group of tenacious women and a few guys, they drug her along with them. To make a change in our county, I am finding that it is helping me have tools to go forward and feel that as I go through my day, that I'm more conscious of what I'm leaving behind, what I'm taking with me, and I urge you all to get involved. If you're not already, so many of you already are, please continue to be stewards. Thank you so much for your assistance and helping me find tools to make sure that when I go to sleep at night, that I feel like I'm at least conscious. Thank you so much. Good morning, Marin Supervisors. I'm Patrick Costello, local financial planner from San Anselmo. I'm here today to advocate for our species survival on this priceless blue marble, this blue marvel of a planet. The recent UN report on global warming makes it clear that stark changes must be made in the way we do things. Today, I urge the board to pass a resolution asking the trustees of Marin's Employee Pension Fund to divest from investments in coal, oil, and gas. Burning these fossil fuels puts vast amounts of carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide into the atmosphere. The urgency and the moral responsibility we all share to move quickly and reduce these emissions has never been greater. The leaders of Exxon and Chevron have done little to avert this looming existential crisis. Investors have tried shareholder activism, but this seat at the table afforded them no real influence. In November, oil companies spent tens of millions of dollars to defeat modest climate legislation in Washington State and Colorado. They are set on pursuing business as usual as long as they can get away with it. In urging the Marin Pension Board to divest, you would be echoing measures taken by California in 2015 instructing state pension plans to divest from coal and also the recently passed SB 964 requiring the pension plans to report on the climate impacts of their investments. You would be aligning Marin County with San Francisco's pension board. In October, they identified five fossil fuel companies from which they'll divest unless specific climate saving improvements are made. Worldwide, a thousand institutions, including the country of Ireland, 
are divesting $8 trillion from fossil fuel stocks. I thank the supervisors for their climate defending actions, joining a lawsuit against fossil fuel companies for damages caused by the sea level rise and supporting electric vehicle infrastructure. In closing, I encourage Marin supervisors to continue staunchly defending our climate and become leaders in the fossil fuel divestment movement. Metaphorically, fossil fuels are like dinosaur blood that we've become addicted to. It's time to kick the habit. We are not going to be able to operate Spaceship Earth successfully, nor much longer, unless we see it as a whole spaceship and our fate is common. It has to be everybody or nobody. Philosopher and scientist Buckminster Fuller spoke these words in 1975, around the time this class was started. My name is Marcus Thorndike. I'm the author of the upcoming book, Leap, The Case for the Country of Earth. In the last 45 years, this class, its students, its founders, and this county as a whole have achieved so much. And in the years to come, I know everyone in this room wants to achieve so much more. Further, I know we all want our families to live and our children to grow up in a healthy, vibrant world of sustainability, equality, and peace. But if you do not, if you have not even if you have not attended one of the classes from the Environmental Forum this, this semester on climate change, we already know how much climate change is affecting us. Every speech today has been speaking about it. And as everyone here also knows, this is all but the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the massive global problems of our time. Our world, as a whole, needs our help. It needs our partnership, but most of all, it needs our citizenship. If you believe as I do, and as Buckminster Fuller did, that all of our fates and our futures on this planet are connected, then we must work together to find a way for humanity to serve, as Buckminster Fuller put it, as the crew of Spaceship Earth and solve the massive global problems of our time. But how? How can we come together as a planet? I believe the way, and perhaps the only way, for us to do this is by forming a new country called Earth. Earth is a country right under our feet, a country in which everyone is already a dual citizen of, no matter where you are from. We can create this new country as a direct democracy, where we can vote directly on the issues we care about. It is a country that can be created of, by, and for all of us, the country of Earth. If all the efforts of this community over the past 45 years are going to mean something to our great-grandchildren, then caring for what is found within the boundaries of this county, or even our local country, the United States, can no longer be enough. If we care for the long-term health of Marin and its families, then we must also do our part to bring this world together. I invite you to join in this new movement by registering yourself as a declared citizen of the country of Earth. You can do so at declare.earth. Please join me in birthing this movement to bring our world together for the future of Marin and the future of all that we love. Thank you.